Hey everyone, welcome to this new lesson that we're gonna do today um, featuring a, a, a lake, a kind of a dried out lake and a beautiful sunset. Um, I chose a very simple painting here um, because I wanted to do a simple follow along, something that is fun and that's gonna turn out good. All right, so there's no particular specific lesson today. This is meant to be a follow along, um, just to kind of illustrate how I paint these types of clouds specifically, how I get that kind of red glow underneath, and uh, how to turn a photo that really it's just kind of boring in the bottom half, how to turn this into a more engaging composition than the photograph, all right? so. There is a, uh, a bunch of lawnmowers going off outside today. So if you hear a low rumbling, I apologize. There's not much I can do about that. I've been trying to wait for the right moment. And just when I hear silence, then I hear another lawnmower start up. So I know it can, if you've, if you've got a lot of bass up on your system, it'll really be annoying. So if you're hearing a lawnmower um, periodically, uh, a good tip is to turn the bass down on whatever you're listening on, if you can. All right, so to begin with, I am working on an eight by 10 panel. We're not working on canvas today. It's been gessoed, so I've taken it and I've taken world's greatest gesso from Jerry's Artorama and just applied it with a brush and then lightly sanded it once and then applied another coat. Um, so it's got a couple coats of gesso over the commercial gesso that was already on it. And it is a birch panel. So I, I buy these cradled wood birch panels. Here, let me actually grab a raw one. So they kind of look like this. You see, they got a cradle on them, about an inch. Actually, it's about, sorry, it's about 0.78 inches on these. And the surface is really smooth. So I just apply a bunch of gesso and I sand between each coat. And then the last coat that I put on, usually I put four coats total. Each coat I add just a little bit more water, not much. So the first coat, no water. Second coat, just a little bit of water, sand it. Third coat, a little bit more water so it's more. And the, the reason you add more water and you sand it the first three coats is because you'll get lines from the brush and you don't want that, especially on a small painting. They'll be very distracting if there's these big lines from where the gesso dried and the brush strokes are stuck in there. Um, so you sand it to knock those lines down. And then on the last coat, since you're not gonna sand the last one, you want the gesso to be more liquid so it kind of settles and it doesn't hold the brush strokes. So that's why you add and you sand. All right, sorry, it's a lot of talking. I'm gonna grab a small round and we are gonna just start with a little quick underpainting in purple, just to lock in our drawing. This is actually gonna be considered the underdrawing. So I'm gonna change the photograph around a bit too. This is not gonna be an identical copy of a photograph. This is more about creating an engaging painting being inspired by the photograph. I've painted this spot, Stockton Lake, many, many, many times on location, plein air. So I'm gonna rely a lot on my emotional connection and memory to try to evoke the sense of that place. All right, so. I'm gonna use blue to signify the, there's a hill in real life when you're there, there's a hill that's further back in the distance. So they're actually, these are actually two separate hills. The surface is very rough. There's a lot of tooth to it because I didn't sand the last layer of gesso. So you've got to kind of really, you got to use more paint on a surface that has a lot of tooth. And you got to really scrub it in to get the surface to take it. I can darken this a little bit here. All right, now, 
I'm going to change the foreground here. I'm going to come down and I'm actually going to like pretend that there's a little shoot of land here kind of comes out right here and there's water behind it. So there's like some trees, let's say that come up. like that so there'll be water behind the trees there just to add a little bit of contrast dark against light really helps all right let's just do a straight line relatively straight line it's probably a little crooked it's okay though move to a little larger brush so i can cover some ground here Scrub this in. change that there so this looks very rough um, I'm kind of searching right now in my mind on what I want to see here and I'm not really digging what I've got so far All right, and then that blue that you see very faintly in the photo, I know the photo is very dark. There's not a lot I can do about that. It's a low quality cell phone photo, so I can't really edit it too much. Otherwise the sky will get too bright. So there's kind of just a dry bed of, of dry lake bed of sand and rocks here. So I'm just gonna block it in as like a light blue. I think I need to bring this up more up here. And then in the foreground, let's just do a dark kind of green wash. So there's some grass here. Okay, and now right here, there's actually a reflection, a dark black reflection of the hillside in the water over here as well. And then the sunset will kind of come in here and reflect. So it's all going to look very sloppy. If you're following along at home, don't worry. Just get, just try to get the general shapes blocked in and the drawing, the actual drawing will start to fine tune it and push paint around when we get the thicker paint up. Remember, this isn't the focal point anyway. The goal down here is just to have, is to have just enough detail to where it doesn't look like you phoned it in. Like you, uh, or you don't also want your foreground or, or the bottom landscape portion of a painting to look like you simply didn't know what you were doing 
which can happen sometimes. If you just leave it too suggestive and you detail the sky too much, there becomes an imbalance where everyone will say, wow, you paint skies really well, but they will never mention how you paint your landscape because it becomes apparent to the viewer that you're putting all of your effort in your sky and not enough in your landscape. So you want to have enough detail down here to where the entire paint, painting impresses people and not just the sky. But you still want the sky to be the focal point. So <laughs> that's what I say, it's, it's tricky finding that balance between how much detail to put in your foreground landscape. And honestly, I plan over the next few months on teaching a lot more about detail. Um, one of the upcoming videos is gonna be about how to detail grass, um, like really hyper detailed grass in the foreground, which I haven't really done that yet. Um, I've done like a looser approach to detail, but we're gonna actually go over how to paint like actual, you know, little bushes and blades of grass and things like that. I don't do that enough. All right, so this is our basic landscape on the bottom. Um, for the sky, I'm gonna do a wash of red for the drawing, just to get the shape of the clouds in. So I'm taking my round brush and let's take some alizarin and some red. And now I just need to kind of figure out where, you know, let's take a little bit of blue too. I need it to be darker purple, just to see the lines. And we're gonna come in and there's kind of a, so there's a lot of parallel lines in this landscape. I wanna make sure I preserve the diagonals in the sky because those are gonna offset all of these. So let's exaggerate the diagonal a little more here, coming up like that. And then down here, we've got some sky poking through, some bright orange down here kind of poking through. And then um, this will all be red, bright red clouds being underlit, the bellies being underlit. The glow of the sun will also, we're also gonna exaggerate the glow of the sun, which in the photo you can't see it, but in real life it was creating a kind of a diffused effect of this hill. It got bright red right here. So we'll, we'll work on how to make that look bright. Um, the cloud kind of comes up here and then I've gotta be careful here to get the detail in these clouds. So there's a piece of the cloud that comes right here. And then right here, I'm just basically drawing with the brush. Okay. Let's see, this kind of comes up here. I know that lawnmower's getting really loud now. So, all right. Now over here, we got a, some little clouds and some kind of sky effects stuff going on. Some bigger, darker clouds here. And then let's maybe put one up here. So very, very rough, just compositional lines. So since there's so much dark down here, I don't want to put a lot of clouds on this side over here. I want the clouds to be heavy on this side to counterbalance the weight of this dark down here. So all those clouds in a line in the photo right here, I'm just going to edit those out. And I'm just going to emphasize one little cloud up here, maybe a little offshoot right there, like that. And then the majority of the clouds will be right up here in this corner. Um, Okay, so as you can see, I've let this sit for a little bit and how you can tell is it started to get sucked in. See, all the odorless mineral spirits has evaporated and we're left with a little thin layer of oil. Um, and that's perfect um, because it'll allow me to paint over the top. It's almost like I've oiled out the surface. The paint will flow a little bit easier on the wood panel after the Odos Mineral Spirits evaporates. So now I'm just gonna key in by just mixing up a general dark black. Just 
to help me key in the sky. And I'm not even going to fill the whole thing in yet. That was the paper towel roll. I just went poof, real quick to get the glare out. All right, now I have a dark. And this dark can inform what goes right above it in the sky, the orange there. So if you're following along at home, think of it as putting together a puzzle. We start with the dark and then we put in our next puzzle, we find our next puzzle piece and we put that shape and color next to that dark. And now we have two shapes and uh, you just build it out from there until you get most of the canvas covered up. I'm using a round brush. This is a small eight by 10, so I don't need a big brush for this. I'm just trying to mix a bright orange here. Let's actually go more of a red. This might be a little bit too dark. Eh, no, it's fine. So I'm just gonna start with orange right up against the edge of that black there. So with a rough grained canvas, I have to squiggle the brush up and down just slightly to get the paint to come off of it. And as we move further over here, I'm gonna introduce more red and white so it gets less orange and more on the red end of the spectrum. Down here, let's get a little bit more yellow right here. Okay. Now, white, purple, and red. And I'm gonna mix this purple right into this pool of orange. So I've got a transition kind of red right here. Well, it needs to be darker. There we go, more of a purple for right here. All right. All right, I'm gonna take this red color and I'm actually gonna come right up here to, while I've got it on the palette, let's just block in some red up here. Hear me squiggling that, pushing that brush in firmly. By the way, I'm dipping my brush in just a little odorless mineral spirits to get the paint to flow. And then I'm pushing firmly and scrubbing it into the wood grain. All right. So I'm changing the photograph a little bit. Um, my painting is going to look a little different. My clouds are going to be a little bit more bright red. Um, just not much, but a little bit. All right, so those are basically the warms that I've got so far. So now I'm gonna take blue and I'm gonna mix it right into this pool. And I'm gonna check what I got here. Oop. So it needs more purple. So white, ultramarine blue, and alizarin. Let's try that. It needs more red. Yeah, okay. This may be too dark, but that's okay. I can lighten it later. All right, so when you're painting clouds, as I've gone over in other lessons, especially sunlit clouds, um, you don't want to paint, so if you're looking at clouds that have yellows, oranges, and blues, and purples, you don't want to paint the blues and the purples and the darker colors first. You want to underpaint the clouds with the warm colors and then paint the cool colors into the warm so you get these beautiful soft edges. So I'm actually going to extend the orange or the red out. Whoop, need to make it a little brighter. I'm gonna extend that out a little further over here and on this side down here. And then up here as well. Just 
to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Whoop. Get some more red here. Really scrubbing into that green. Okay. Grab a blending brush and I'm just gonna blend out some of this. Okay, so now I've got the warm under painting. Now I come in with a round brush and a kind of bluish purple, or more of a purple, I guess. Test it out, too light, it needs to be darker. And I'm gonna paint that bluish purple right into the wet paint. Let's use a larger. I'm moving to a size five flat now. that's too dark so that a little bit of white to it maybe a little yellow to gray it down there we go on this side same thing so I work on clouds I work warm and light to cool and dark all right so the, that means I start with the warm and then I get a little bit cooler, almost kind of a brown, and then I go into the purple end, and then at the very end I'll go into the blue end. So you start from your brightest, your warmest, and your brightest color, and you move to your coolest and your darkest color. That's how you layer clouds wet and wet, or at least how I do it. So I'm periodically taking the soft blending brush and I'm just doing horizontal brush strokes for now. You can do some down ones if you want, or you can actually just take the paper towel roll and do that too. All right, so now I'm gonna move back to the round and I need to draw in the edges of the in clouds. It's very important. Move to a blue here. wet the brush a little bit so I can get it to do what I want. And re remember, I can also cut back into these clouds with the blue part of the sky to help shape them as well. So it doesn't have to look perfect yet right here. And then there's kind of some bluish clouds that come up here on this side behind. Okay. Whoop. Make sure you keep cleaning your blending brush by wiping it off or grab a new one. Some downward strokes here. Downward strokes for different folks, huh? Sorry, that was dumb. Um, all right, let's see. I guess what I would like to do now is kind of clean off this bit of the palette here and then start with a uh, pool for the color for the sky. I don't want the sky to be, the blue part of the sky to be as light as the photograph. The photograph, it, the contrast is all messed up. The sky was actually darker. It's not that kind of light. The reason it looks that light in the photo is because of the camera. In order to brighten up the landscape down here, I had to turn the brightness up. So it shot this up way too bright. So we're actually gonna start with kind of a warm gray. 
Let's try that. Well, it's a little too green, so add a little bit of red to it and white. Needs a little more yellow. Basically like an orangish, bluish, greenish, grayish red. Hmm. Eh, I think that's fine for now. So notice how I'm not going right up to the edge. I'm just blocking it in. So I'm going close up to the edge, but I'm kind of leaving it white for now. And then we get a little more white, but then blue. Too dark. Add a little more white. Get a little more blue. I keep having to wet the tip of the brush in the Otos Mineral Spirits because this wood panel is so rough. It, uh, the paint won't flow onto the panel unless you've got it thinned out quite a bit. That's too dark. Too vibrant, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of alizarin and yellow to this blue to gray it down. For now, that works for our gradation. I can grab a paper towel roll here in a bit and just go whew, down real quick to get the sideways brush strokes out. Or you can just grab a new clean blending brush and do it this way. Start from where the canvas is bare up here and go down, soft, and then white, and then down again. Wipe, down, wipe, down, wipe, down. And just keep going back and forth. Horizontal, clean the brush off, down. Horizontal, down until it looks even and you don't have any brush strokes. You don't want this to happen. See how the blue got carried down into the yellow too much? So if that happens, you just start over by doing horizontal and then again, down. Now I've got a perfect gradation. All right, so I'm gonna pull up another sunset. Um, it's probably my most famous sunset painting. Uh, those of you that have followed my art for quite a while might know it. Um, it's a twilight scene from my website. Uh, let me pull it up and I'm just going to use this because it was based off of the same lake uh, lake and uh, let me hold it up to the camera for you to see what I'm talking about that painting it's uh, on my website in the sold section um, and I'm actually going to use this to help inform some of the shape of the clouds up there in the higher part of the sky. So let's see what that would look like. So I'm going to use my round brush and some purple. So there's some red that kind of comes off over here this way and then some purple up here and then a little bit over here
the underbelly of these clouds will be red, like in the painting, not in the photo. So that's what I meant earlier when I said that this painting is going to be more red than the photograph. It's because I'm also partly basing it off of this older sunset. And in the older sunset, it's people responded to it. And I've had several people say that they wanted me to do a, uh, a lesson on how to get those bright colors. So I figured I would incorporate that into this lesson. So for the bright red, it's really simple. It's just white. You need to make sure you're using a bright red and not cadmium red. Cadmium red gets a little bit too pastel or chalky when you mix white with it. The key with getting the bright reds is also making sure you have enough contrast and cool colors down. Otherwise the red won't look. The only reason this right here looks like it's illuminated is because I did all of the work putting in the darks first and blending in these subtle darks around it surrounding it with those subtle grays and darks allows this to have the illusion of being lit there. That's how you do it. It's, it's actually pretty simple. It took me a long time to learn it though, so I know it's not actually simple. It's one of those things where it's like, when, you, when it clicks, it clicks, and you go, oh man, that's a lot more easy than I thought it was gonna be, kind of thing. So right now, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Maybe up here there's one. And then over here. off my blending brush and then let's just do some downward strokes very I'm barely skimming the surface just to blend this out just a hair I'm blending these into that blue sky softening the edges right here and that's because I'm going to cut back in around it with the blue sky here. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to move to a large brush now. This is a size 12 filbert. Mix up a darker, not too dark, but a blue for the top of the sky up here. Let's test it out. Yeah, that's good. Maybe a little bit more purple in it. Actually, let's put a little bit of yellow in it. Come back around here. Now I'm going to come right up to the edge of this cloud here. And then up here, let's block it in. right over some of these clouds here. All right. Clean the brush off. So I've already blended this part and then I came up to that edge. So I'm just gonna do those horizontal strokes again there. Let's do them here too. There we go. And now, all I need to do is downward strokes again. Now all that's soft, but I'm gonna cut back into it again and I can shape those clouds.
let's mix up a lighter blue for down here. Kind of more yellow in it. Ah, shoot. It needs to be darker. Sorry. There we go. Actually, going to take the paper towel roll and just blend that out. I might have to do two layers on this painting. Um, I'm concerned more with this turning out good than actually uh, um, trying to do it in one layer. All right, I'm going to take the blending brush. I'm just going to blend out the edge of these clouds here. I can use my finger too. So what's going on here is this is too lopsided now. I, de I definitely need some clouds over here to help uh, balance it out. Maybe put some. I think it needs to be brighter. Maybe putting that crescent moon right here will actually help it balance too. But we'll do that at the end if we need to. For now, we're just gonna leave it. Put a little bit of red up here, kinda. All right, that gives me a decent start. Um, I'm gonna take a little break from the sky 
and we're going to work on the landscape portion down here. So I'm just going to clean up everything and then we'll get started on that. And the reason we're going to move around is just to, to kind of work the painting up as a whole. You know, you don't want to work on the same thing for too long. If you catch yourself working on one element for more than 15, 20 minutes, take a break or move on to something else. Because it's really easy to get blinded by just working on one thing. You kind of hyper-focus on it and then you lose sight of the big picture. So I generally have these, I force myself to stop. Okie dokie. So I'm back working from the original photo reference now. I do this a lot where I don't work from one photo. I, I can't stress how important that is. Um, you know, to have, to not rely on copying a photo, to kind of use the photo and then let's say you have elements within the photo, you have sunset sky, you have these hills, um, and then you know, you have all the elements, so then you can go through other photos or even pick out little plein air paintings. In my studio, you can't see it, but all the walls have plein air paintings around them. Um, and so what I'll do is I have those spaced out around the studio so I can look at them. So whenever I need to see what a hillside looks like, I can look at those. And so I'm pulling from all these different places. You don't want to get in the habit of just copying the photo. And I actually get pretty defensive when people say my work looks like photo um, because a lot of my work is not done from photos. Of course, all of the work I do in this school is because I have to have a reference for you guys. I can't just paint from in my normal approach. But this is a good example of me using a photo but then changing it by using one of my past paintings and then imagination. So the end product here, it's not going to bear too much resemblance to the photo, if at all. Um, all right, sorry, I know I'm kind of rambling. Let's start mixing up some paint. All right, so I want this, this to glow right here. So let's take red. Whoops, let's scrape it off here. Let's mix up a bright red so that the hill looks like it's being lit up right here, just along this edge to help it. And then let's get purple in here, some darker. Take a blending brush here. Now that's probably a little bit too much. I don't want it to be too cheesy looking. So let's mix up a dark kind of black, green. And then get a little more alizarin in there, some warmth. Blend it out with the brush here. Take the edge of the paper towel roll too and just kind of soften that edge there, right here. All right. So that gives me a basic little uh, start there. And then in the background, let's do a lighter blue, purple. Slightly lighter, not too much lighter. Let's actually do more red.
So things are going to get kind of pushed around and messy. This is what I meant earlier with, with the drawing. We, when, I, when I do a block in with paint like at the start, it's really just to get the general placement of things and the fine tuning of the edges happens at this stage when I start layering in the thicker paint. There's kind of a tree right here coming down. All right, let's mix up a darker kind of blue. Oh, it needs to be darker. It needs to be even darker than that, shoot. Almost the same color as the hill in the first place. Actually, I'm gonna use the palette knife here. Soften that edge. All right, grab my flat size five or six, and let's block in the green here. It needs to be darker, so I'm gonna add some red into that green. Red, yellow, and purple. Still too light, shoot, man. It's a little frustrating. A little bit too dark here. Let's lighten it. Take the blending brush and just kind of soften out. All right. And the water is being lit by the sky, or reflecting the sky rather. So I'm actually just going to block in the light parts of the water, like just like the sky. You start with the warms and you layer the cools into the warms. So we're going to do the same thing in the water. We're going to start with a bright kind of purple red for this corner down here. Well, it needs to be brighter or more saturated. Get some blue in here too because in the photo you'll see some some kind of gray mixed in this is tricky this is where we're working in a tight space here i've already that got kind of crooked there so there's not a lot of space to detail things. So you're gonna, you're gonna, when you're doing stuff like this, you're gonna paint over some areas and have to re-block them in. You know what the, it needs orange. Ah, shoot. Maybe a redder orange here. Okay. All right, and now I just need to blend that out a little bit. I'm going to use the palette knife this time. And then the paper towel roll. Blend it. Now I can come back with the brush. It's 
So this grass is probably too light. Now from here, I'm going to mix up a dark black because the hill reflects in the water there. This isn't working too well, but I know where I'm headed, so I'm not too worried at this part, or at this point, rather. So back here, there's also a reflection of the kind of purple hill. Ah, needs more red. Ah, shoot. that out again. Let's go with a gold water like that. Let's take it. So what I meant earlier is I'm going to take the water here and actually put it behind the trees here. like that. Nah, I'm not I'm not liking this. This is not not what I want happening, so I think I'm going to erase and start over down here. Yeah. Wet my paper towel and just erase all this out. It happens. It's all right. Let me pull up the other painting and see how I dealt with it in that one. All right. Okay. So let's mix up a dark black again. So we come in here, comes down here, grab another clean blending brush. I'm going to take the tip of my finger in the paper towel and I'm going to just wipe out a straight line here. Then blend a little bit here. Take the paper towel roll. So the water needs to be darker, or the uh, grass needs to be darker. Sometimes soften, blending, erasing, and then blending everything out and softening it allows you to kind of start over. Now I can, I have all this softness. I can just lay in the reflection of the light in the water right over the top, just right here. Let's try this. And 
and then behind it back here. Kind of a lighter gray here. A little more subtle, see that? See much, how much different that is? I can continue, or I could wait till it dries, and then I could detail this more. I could add those trees, a little couple little trees. Let's try to do it wet and wet. shape the uh, sky here. Take some orange. Some bright red. And then some pure red and alizarin. Just right there. the palette knife and blend that out. So when I take the paper towel roll, what I do is I look for a clean edge and I just lightly go down. Took too much paint off that time. I don't have a lot of clean yellow left. It's all got mud in it. So I've got to come down here. There we go. So what I'm doing right now, it's called edge work. I'm concerned with the edge, how it meets the sky. I don't want it to be too hard or soft. So I'm softening the edge right here to give it a realistic look. And I'm gonna keep the edge harder around the sides. Let's take some purple here. I think this dips up too much, so I'm actually going to try changing the contour of the hill there. All right, and now safely, cautiously and slowly, blend out without destroying too much. Shoot, which I just did.
still think it needs to be more diffused, more red right here. There we go. Pretty subtle. So I definitely think this painting will benefit from being touched up on a second layer. I can fix this edge here. I'm not liking that. Let's take some bright yellow, orange right here. starting to run out of blending brushes. That's why it's a good idea to have a lot of blending brushes. Over 10. Because they quickly become unusable. You can only clean them by scrubbing them dry so much before there's just too much paint on them. All right. a good resting point and then uh, let it set up for a little bit. You don't have to, but I like to let things kind of sit for a little bit and the paint sink into the wood grain or the gesso. Come back and then I can start painting in and, and really just detailing and bringing this up to a finish. My, My yellows, yellows tend, tend to get, get pretty, pretty uh, messy. messy. And, and they, they are, are the most important, important color, color for keeping, keeping pure. pure. Because, because any blue gets, gets in there, there. even, even uh, not, not even blue, blue. Anything, anything that has a cooler, cooler temperature, temperature than the yellow will, will, will turn it green. It would, it would probably, probably be wise, wise actually to separate, to separate the two yellows over here. here. But I'm kind of used to the way, way I do things. Okie okay, dokie, okay, let's, uh, let's start darkening up some, some of the clouds. clouds. I'm, I'm taking take my round, round brush. brush. This is going to be way, way too dark, dark I'm, I'm sure. sure. Maybe, Maybe it'll, it'll work, work now. Too, too light. light. Yep. yep. A little, a little bit too, too light, light now. now. So I'm so mixing, mixing up, up a purple. purple. That's just a little, little pressure, pressure in there. there. I don't, I don't want to go, go too dark, dark so I'm going to be very, very subtle. subtle. A little, a little bit more red. red. I'm, I'm looking, looking at the photo now, and I'm trying to... Try to detail these clouds, not, not too, too much, much, just, just enough. enough. It probably doesn't even really need it. I like, I like to darken, darken right, right under, under the red, red part, part just, just so it pops, pops out, out a little more. Just, just in, in a few areas. areas. Wiggling in with the side, side of the brush, brush really pushing, pushing it.
Grab a little bit of this dark on my brush, and I'm just going to peck in some dark right up here above these clouds. This can be fixed and kind of detailed after it dries a little bit, too. I'm not going to do too much right now. I just kind of want to get everything blocked in, and then I can really... I can literally spend probably like five minutes detailing this after it dries by just oiling it out and then coming in and doing a few details here and there. Let's see what it would look like with some bright yellow right in here. It's a little too, too much, much. So, so I'm going to knock it back with the palette knife here. Just, just creates a little bit of some brighter, brighter. just to draw the eye there maybe. Okay. okay. So, so if, if you notice, notice in the photo, photo some, some of the blue sky peeks through the clouds. And I, I think that's, that's important to have, to have a little bit of that. Bit of that. It's, it's kind, kind of a yellow, yellow a brighter, brighter yellow. yellow. Let's, Let's see, see what it would look like if I try to put that in. It needs to be brighter. I might be able to just get rid of this if it doesn't look good. Take some red now. Whoop. Whoop. Kind of messed that, that up. up. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like, like it. it. Let's, Let's leave, leave it like, like this for now. Wait, wait, wait for, for it to dry. dry. <clears throat> and, and then, then I, I, I am going to put that crescent moon in, probably, probably right over here. here. Just, just to balance it out. out. And, and after it dries, dries we'll just, just touch up some of the reflections in the water, maybe help detail those trees right here just a little bit. bit. And then probably, probably put a glaze over the grass, grass here. All right. Thanks for watching this first part.